Hi, today we're going to talk about thyroid conversion from the inactive hormone T4 to the active hormone T3. My name is Dr. Greg Salaya. Before we start understanding conversion, let's take a look at the physiology of how the thyroid gland works. When your body senses that thyroid hormone is low, the pituitary in the brain tells the thyroid by TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, to start producing more thyroid hormone. And when it does so, it starts to produce about 7% T3, the active thyroid hormone, and 93% T4. And those hormones are actually converted in the liver and in the gut to T3 and reverse T3. When we start to have increased stress for either a long period of time or pretty abruptly, what actually ends up happening is your cortisol is produced and it blunts thyroid stimulating hormone from producing this cascade. In addition to that, it starts producing more reverse T3 that is inactive thyroid hormone that binds to the receptor sites where T3 normally would. We then have T3 or active thyroid hormone problems. So we have T4, which has four iodines bound to it. There's an enzyme called 5' deionase, which goes ahead and it takes off one of the iodines and forms T3, which is the active thyroid hormone. When we have increased stress or stress that's been with us for a long time, your body actually produces more reverse T3 in response to that stress. An enzyme called 5' deionase takes the iodine off the opposing side. You know, if you look at both of these, they look very, very similar and they almost look like a mirror of each other. But when reverse T3 binds to the receptor sites in the cell, it's actually an inactive thyroid hormone, but it takes up the receptor and makes it so we don't have space for the active thyroid hormone to stimulate the cell to increase metabolism. So when we see that increase in stress, we can actually see how reverse T3 starts to increase. So how do we know if we have too much reverse T3 in our system? Well, here's a couple good equations for you. We have free T3 divided by reverse T3, and it's a ratio, and that ratio should be greater than 20. And if you want to use just regular T3, the protein bound, that's T3 divided by reverse T3 should be greater than 10. Let's take a look at the things now that cause a reduction in conversion from T4 to T3. One of the big ones is stress, because it can actually change your cortisol levels, either decreased or increased cortisol levels can actually cause a problem with conversion from T4 to T3. It can also minimize the effect of thyroid stimulating hormone on the thyroid itself, thereby reducing the actual formation of thyroid hormone. Gut bacteria are very, very important for the conversion of T4 to T3. When you have an imbalance between the good and the bad bacteria in the gut, this may significantly reduce the conversion, uh, causing inflammation in the gut, which also reduces T3 by raising cortisol. There's many medications that can actually blunt or slow down the formation of T4 to T3, and amiodarone is one of them, which is actually given for tachycardia and other cardiac issues. We also have corticosteroids, which can be a big one also. Inflammation and infections cause a problem as well. When we start to see an increase in CRP, C-reactive protein, we see reduced tissue levels of T3. Gluten or grain can actually cause a problem because of inflammation in the gut and sometimes celiac disease as well. When we see an increased inflammatory situation occur, we can also see a reduction of conversion. Birth control pills contain different amounts of estrogen and progesterone in synthetic forms. And usually when we see increase in estrogen, we can actually create a problem with conversion from T4 to T3. Bisphenol A as well is a synthetic estrogen which can do the same thing. Did you know just about all our rice has arsenic in it? Go to the FDA website and take a look, you'll see. I'm gonna be doing a video on this pretty soon as well, but rice is one of those important things that we have to be careful of and you may not wanna eat it every day. Just for the fact that you don't wanna be exposed to arsenic, which can increase inflammation and therefore reduce T4 to T3 conversion. Persistent organic pollutants. They range from anything from pesticides, which we're bombarded with every day, to toxins in the air, to fluids that we're drinking. These pollutants are a big issue, and the minimal problem that we have is conversion from T4 to T3, but they can cause so many more things. So we have to be very careful what we're exposed to. And speaking of exposures, fluoride is one of those things that are added to our water without you and I knowing about it or we're not even being asked. But what actually happens is fluoride and bromide look a lot like iodine, and they four can start to bind in place of iodine in our thyroid hormone which creates inflammation and therefore a reduction not only in the conversion but reduction in the formation of thyroid hormone itself. 
With so much of the conversion happening in the liver, if you have liver disease, not only are you not going to convert, but also you're not going to produce the proteins that actually go through and take the inactive thyroid hormone to areas where it needs to be activated, so the bound T4 or T3. Kidney disease is important because kidney is responsible for some of the deionases, you know, those enzymes that we talked about that actually remove iodine from T4 to form T3 or reverse T3. So this is insulin, and insulin can create increase in inflammation in our bodies, which can reduce the conversion from T4 to T3. Anemia can be caused from a reduction of iron, and this can significantly reduce the conversion of T4 to T3. Just looking at that list of things that can actually reduce conversion from T4 to T3, you see that most of them are due to what man's done to man. So now that we talked about all the things that can reduce conversion, we can actually get deficient in a lot of things that can create these issues to occur as well. Selenium is very important for those deionized enzymes, those enzymes that are responsible for removing the iodine from T4 to create T3 or reverse T3. Zinc is actually required for the healthy production of T4 and healthy T3 receptors in your cells. Iron is required for thyroid hormone production and the conversion of T4 into T3 and for the best utilization of T3 inside the cell. Vitamin A is important for thyroid hormone receptors as it activates the gene that regulates thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. Vitamin D is probably one of the most important things that you can take to reduce inflammation and to help your immune system. It's almost not even considered a vitamin anymore, it's considered a hormone. Making sure you have appropriate amounts of vitamin D help conversion from T4 to T3 because they help reduce inflammation. Vitamin C has quite high antioxidant value. Antioxidants have been shown to reduce thyroid function when the liver is backed up and is having difficulty detoxifying. Vitamin B can be depleted when we're starting to deal with increase in stress. And when we have a reduction of the B vitamins, we have increased inflammation and therefore reduction of conversion of T4 to T3. Tyrosine is the backbone of our thyroid hormones. And at each corner, we have iodine, which is placed there as well. And this iodine helps the cell's receptor sites understand what type of thyroid hormone is being bound to them. T4 inactive, T3 active, and reverse T3 inactive. So let's take a look at thyroid lab tests. TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, is a hormone that's produced by the pituitary, and its job is to tell the thyroid to speed up. I like this test because it helps me understand what the pituitary is doing and also thyroid function when I look at this with other labs as well. T4, or total T4, reflects the total amount of inactive thyroid hormone bound to proteins. About 95 to 98% of thyroid hormone is bound to proteins, or thyroid bonding globulin, uh, making up the total thyroid hormone. The remaining 2 to 5% is free and is unbound to proteins. T4 is a good assessment of thyroid output. Free T4 is the amount of T4 not bound to a protein. It's more accurate as it's not affected by protein levels. T3 or total 3 is the amount of T3 bound to protein. And free T3 is the amount of T3 not bound to protein. Uh, just like T4, it's more accurate as it's not affected by protein levels. It is the most active thyroid hormone that we have. Reverse T3 is an inactive hormone. Normally, 20% of T4 goes into making reverse T3. One problem is that stress can increase or decrease cortisol levels, uh, which in turn increases reverse T3. Reverse T3 can then bind to active hormone sites in the cell, causing hypothyroid issues as reverse T3 is inactive. T3RU, or T3 resin uptake, is used to assess protein transport proteins and the ability to bind in the blood. In addition to regular labs, we also need to look at autoimmune markers, TGAB, or thyroglobulin antibody. And this antibody targets thyroglobulin, which is a protein involved in T3 and T4 hormone production. Uh, it can be ordered for hypo and hyperthyroid uh, evaluation and management. TPOAB, or thyroid peroxidase. And thyroid peroxidase is an enzyme that helps activate iodine in the making of thyroid hormone. It also helps connect tyrosine together to make the backbone of the thyroid hormones. Uh, this test is usually used if a person has Graves or Hashimoto's disease. Thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibody. This measures the antibodies against the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor in the thyroid. This can be seen in Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. TSI, or thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, uh, binds to receptors and promotes the production of thyroid hormones, leading to hyperthyroidism, and it's seen with Graves' disease.
TBII prevents thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, from binding to proteins in the thyroid gland. This test can be used to assess Graves' disease treatment. It's common for me to hear from patients that their doctors told them their thyroid labs look normal. Uh, and when I look at their labs, all it was run was a standard TSH and T4. Yes, I agree that those two tests are important, but there's so much more to consider. When someone's not using T4 to convert to T3, those T3 levels will decrease while T4 backs up, causing levels to be increased. And with those T4 levels increased, your TSH level will decrease as well because your body doesn't think it needs any more thyroid hormone. This will cause your thyroid hormone production to be less and thereby increasing your hypothyroid issues. For others that may be already taking thyroid hormone, which is probably going to be synthetic, a synthroid, which is only T4. Another issue can be when you go to your doctor and they do a follow-up lab. They see a high T4 and don't run a T3. Then as a result, they reduce your medication. Uh, sometimes this can be right and sometimes it can be wrong because higher levels of T4 may mean that you're not converting. Now you're hypothyroid again. It can be a roller coaster. There are also other issues with taking synthetic straight T4. Research has shown that patients that take it have lower levels of T3 than the general population. Uh, this can be a problem with uh, medication or a doctor thing as well. Either way, you as a thyroid patient now have a problem. For most people, a bioidentical type of thyroid replacement hormone can really make a difference. It's very similar to what your thyroid puts out, a T4 and T3, a very small percentage of T3. But for other people like those with Graves' disease and Hashimoto's, T3 can really be a problem. So it's one of those things you have to make sure to run all these labs to understand what kind of patient you're dealing with in order to have the correct treatment for a thyroid problem. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you've learned some things about your health. If you'd like to know more, please go to my website, drsalea.com, where you can schedule for a free 15-minute consultation or become a new patient. We'll look into your issues with lab work to get to the root cause of your problems. If you'd like to see more videos about your health, please subscribe below.